Welcome once again to our daily video devotions, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Poppy. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Our Bible reading for today is the Old Testament reading appointed for the baptism of our Lord. Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 7. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be familiar with the servant songs that are recorded for us in the prophet Isaiah. Most people would say that there are four servant songs in Isaiah. The most familiar, the one that we hear every year during the Lenten season and especially on Good Friday, Isaiah 52 and 53, the suffering servant song. Here in Isaiah 42, we have a servant song as well. Behold my servant. All of these servant songs are teaching us something about the servant Jesus. The servant Jesus who comes to save us. And as we hear these words from Isaiah 42, we don't see a suffering servant. We see a servant who brings justice. What do you think of when you hear that word justice? Well, things are done in a right and just way. If you think of a courtroom scene and the justice that takes place there, then the innocent would go free. They would be exonerated. And the guilty would be punished and condemned. That would be a perfect justice scenario. Never would there be someone who was innocent and yet was condemned or punished. Never would there be someone who was guilty and yet through some loophole got free. God's justice is a perfect justice. The servant that God has chosen, that God has anointed for this great work to bring justice, brings forth justice to the nations. But he does it in almost kind of a crazy way. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. This won't be some loud mouth hollering about justice or protesting on the street. No, this will be a real justice. And in this justice, a bruised reed will not be broken and a faintly burning wick will not be put out. Those who are weak and trembling will not be taken advantage of. He will faithfully bring forth justice. And as he does this, this servant won't grow faint or discouraged. We sometimes grow faint and discouraged when we see the lack of justice in our world. 
When we see the lack of justice being played out, not only in courtroom scenes, but maybe even in our own heart, our own families, our own churches, things are not always as just as they could be. My friends, Jesus, our servant, was anointed to bring forth perfect justice. And the way he does this is in the most amazing way. Jesus stands in our place. The just punishment for our sins is not laid on us. We deserve it. But God in his love and his mercy has sent this servant to be our substitute, to take our place. God in his perfect justice lays the guilt and the iniquity for our sin on Jesus. In God's perfect justice, Jesus pays for your sin, for my sin, for the sin of the world. The innocent one bleeds and dies for the guilty. God looks at this sacrifice of Jesus, his blood that covers over us, his blood that was put on us in the waters of holy baptism. He looks at us and in his perfect justice says, my son, my daughter, because of Jesus, you are innocent, you are guiltless, you are free. My friends, God's justice makes no sense apart from the perfect life, obedient death, and glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. God's perfect justice is poured out to you in the waters of holy baptism. My friends, rejoice today. Don't be discouraged or depressed by the flawed justice that so often happens in this world. Don't think that God will somehow change his rules in the courtroom or accept some kind of a bribe. No, God's justice is perfect. Jesus' sacrifice covers your sin. My friends, you, because of Jesus, are innocent. You're free. And if the Son sets you free, you're free indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen.
by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, we poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To, ra to, to raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayer. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to Oh.
not deal with us according to our sins. Do not reward us according to our iniquities. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we should turn from our evil ways and live. Graciously spare us those punishments which we by our sins have deserved, and grant us always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.